Hi, I'm Shang, and welcome to my channel, where we explore tools, ideas, and lessons that help us become the best versions of ourselves. So today I'm going to share with you a few things that Rilke taught me that put me on the track to really discover what I want out of life. He existed around the turn of the century of the 20th uh, century, so 1900s, right? And um, he saw the Industrial Revolution as well as uh, World War I. Uh, the world was in a state of transition and in a lot of ways reflects the same kind of changes, similar changes that's going through our world today, from technological advances to how there are still a lot of you know, personal questions that can only be answered through personal means, private means, rather than using public uh, methods. His book, Letters to a Young Poet, really describes um, how he feels about the human condition, about love, about solitude, about finding one's self. This book itself was actually written to, or a series of letters over five years, uh, written to a, another young poet who asked him about similar questions. And it's kind of crazy how a lot of the same themes have really resonated with me, you know, past over a hundred years ago now. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. One of the reasons why I read poetry is so that I can gain the vocabulary to describe things that are indescribable. And often these are things that are related to feelings, emotions, as well as you know the things that I see in the natural world. And Rilke actually puts it out really well, where he says, things are not so comprehensible and expressible as one would like us to believe. Most events are inexpressible, taking place in a realm which no word has ever entered. This is what I call, we feel faster than we think. And what I mean by that is, there are often times where we will feel something, but we don't know or we don't have the words yet to express it. And society's conventions typically already has words, otherwise they wouldn't be conventions, right? And they're often in the form of rules, uh, laws, communicated social norms. And I think because they exist in the realm of words, um, they are just a subset of the total human experience. And our own experiences can actually exist outside of that as well. I think it's important to listen to how we feel because these are often the first indicators for you know discovering what we truly want in life. And this is why in my two-week sprints, the retrospective is so important. There is a set of meta questions that ask, you know, what did I like? What did I didn't like? What do I want to keep in the next two-week sprint? This is so that you can start assigning words to these feelings. And hopefully over time, you will start discovering what is it that you truly like or dislike. And for me personally, I really came to terms with the fact that I loved being outdoors and in nature. And I think this was in 2019 after I took a two week wilderness survival course where I was completely disconnected from the internet, from modern conveniences. Heck, I didn't even have my smartphone, right? Or any timekeeping device. And I, when I came back um, to grab my stuff, I was like a, a primate going, what is, what is glass? Why is it so smooth? But what it taught me was that I genuinely loved being out in nature. I felt really strong. I felt, even though, you know, I was never comfortably warm or, or you know, never comfortable in terms of temperature, my body really adjusted to my surroundings and I got the best sleep ever, even though I didn't, I was just sleeping on like these pine needles and stuff. That's not to say that I don't like uh, modern conveniences. I really do. From that experience, I discovered that I'm more of a hybrid. I can do both and I feel at home in both environments. And in fact, I need both. This was something that I have felt, you know, for a while, but it wasn't until being in the company of other people like me, as well as people who are much wiser in this respect than I was, that really brought these words 
into my life to describe exactly what is it that I wanted. And now that I know what is it that makes me feel alive, what is it that I want, I'm spending quite a bit more time and leaning into it more. Because over time, I have discovered that this is what I truly want and feel alive. And I think for you too, it is worthwhile to start paying attention and noting how you feel about certain activities, certain lifestyles, right? And over time, perhaps finding the answers and the words to um, assign to them. I've also learned a lot about um, aloneness as well as friendships um, from Roca. And while these two uh, terms might sound contradictory, they're actually uh, very, very related. I think this passage will probably illustrate, which is, in the deepest and most important things, we are unutterably alone. And for one person to be able to advise or even help another, a lot must happen. A lot must go well. A whole constellation of things must come right in order once to succeed. So what this means to me is that, oh, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? In order for somebody to help us, they have to truly understand us and almost walk our same life path, right? They have to have lived a similar life experience. And how rare is that? This is one of the reasons why I am so grateful and so appreciative of long-term friends um, because they have seen me grow and evolve and go through all my experiences over years, sometimes, you know, entire decade. And because of that context, they really, they really know me. And therefore, when they talk to me about certain things, be it, you know, professional or personal, uh, friendship, career, relationships, these are all things that they know me as a person. So while they haven't lived my life or walked my life path, they have a solid understanding of who I am, where I'm coming from. And truly, that is the best gift that I think we humans can really give each other, which is to bear witness to each other's lives and through that derive understanding, right? And, and I think, you know, that is the most, one of the most powerful things in, in our lives, longtime friends. The third and final concept that I'll share today is um, difficult versus easy, public versus private. And what I mean by that is um, Relka and myself um, both believe that what is difficult is very meaningful. Solitude is difficult and so is to love. And in both respects, these are both private things, right? And in, from a societal standpoint, society um, has a way of making things very easy, partially because of, let's say, capitalism, right? The incentives are so that we reduce friction, so that we mass produce things, so that they are cheap, available, safe, and public. And I think Relka actually conveys this really well, where he talks about this in the context of love, but I think it can be applied to a multitude, a variety of uh, interpersonal matters. Can questions of love be solved publicly according to this or that agreement? That they are questions, intimate questions from one human being to another, which in any case demand a new, special, only personal answer. And I think this really respects the fact that we're all individual human beings with very, very different needs. That the societal conventions may not actually address these deep differences, essentially between people. And if we truly care about this person, then we would take the time to craft an individual, a personal interaction and response to them, right? Rather than just going off of what we think is standard based on societal conventions. And with my own parents, for example, the societal convention, it doesn't really bridge the gap between me and them. 
in a lot of ways. I would prefer to have a more rich relationship with them. In order to do so, I have to be more vulnerable. I have to actually convey what is it that valued the most to me in my life. And sometimes those values will conflict with what they think and what they grew up with as well, right? And there's a lot of intergenerational differences with that. Putting in the effort to bridge those gaps has been risky. They have been emotionally charged sometimes. But at the end of the day, very worthwhile. And I have definitely gone off the beaten path with uh, many different types of relationships, be it friends, parents, or uh, romantic partners. And all of these required a different personal answer that's catered to each individual human being. And so far, the effort has really paid off in the form of a community of people that I can live as my true self around, being genuine around. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this morning session. I hope you have found this helpful. And uh, if you're interested in uh, more videos like this, I made one about the four books that have really influenced my life. Um, Relka's in there as well. So definitely check that out. And until next time, take care.